Brett Rasmussen here. I'm just uh, getting my sled ready for winter. I looked outside this morning and it looked like a great day for a job like this. I'm starting with the uh, cleaning the belts and clutches and uh, just getting it ready to go. So uh, this sled was uh, taken care of last spring. Well, we, did, we went ahead and did a uh, summarization project to it. So the belt's been just laying on a flat surface during the summer, and I'm just gonna make sure that uh, it's clean. Uh, all the belt residue has been removed from the clutches, and I'll go ahead and, and install the belt now with the arrows pointed in the direction of rotation. And then just uh, slide it down into place. It's a little bit tight, and it's just a matter of working it around the bottom clutch. And once that's into place, i uh, go ahead and pull it up and slide it into the uh, secondary clutch, just like that. This, of course, has to be done with the uh, sheave uh, spreader tool in place. Now that the belt's in place, we can remove the sheave spreader tool. Just like that. And now we'll work the belt to the to the top of the uh, clutch once we've taken the tool out. And now with the uh, belt installed and worked clear to the top of the pulleys, it's a good time to check belt deflection. And we go through this, uh, we go through the belt deflection adjustment process in another video, but uh, for now, um, the thing that we want to look at is to see that the groove in the top of the belt, the cog groove, is at or slightly above the surface, the outside diameter of the secondary clutch. If I take the slack out of the belt with my hands, I can kind of rotate it and make sure that it's got some uh, free play. And to put the uh, belt cover on, it's, it's a little bit tight too, but it's just a matter of sliding it in, working it down around the uh, primary clutch, engage the uh, catch here. It's a lot easier than it used to be. And then push the back in so the, there's kind of an interference fit here so that it doesn't rattle once it's installed. But it's a matter of uh, just putting a little pressure on it and then your hairpin can go in place and hold it there. Okay, now's a good time to uh, get your grease gun out if you didn't do this during the summarization uh, process. There's three zerks that you need to make sure you hit. There's one right here on the uh, rear arm scissor and then there's two more where the front arm attached to the slide rail here and here. This is a good time to check the bolt torque where the uh, bolts hold the suspension to the tunnel. It's just a good thing to check periodically um, before you start the season. Uh, these, these bolts rarely come loose, but it's uh, one thing that can cause you some grief if they do. Uh, I'd like to visit, visually check the, all of the hardware, all the bolts on the suspension. This is one that could come loose and cause you some grief. Just take a good, good look at all of the bolts. And while you're uh, here looking um, at the suspension, Check the uh, limiter strap for frays or cracks. Uh, it's a rubber item that could be, um, that could wear over time. The other thing that you need to be physically checking for is the, the bearing in the idler wheels. Just take a hold of the wheel and make sure that it's, that it's good. Um, each one of the wheels Make sure that they're, uh, they're okay. It's pretty easy to throw some new bearings in if you need to. And be sure to check the front, the small idler wheels in the very front of the uh, slide rails. This is a good time to check the fluid levels. I'll top off my uh, injection oil bottle. The XPS oil is what uh, 
Skidoo uses when they uh, prove the engines, right there to the bottom of the filler neck. This has been tested and proven, and, and I want to know that I only have the best products on my snowmobile. So after you've filled the injection oil bottle, uh, the next thing is to do a visual on the uh, master cylinder, the brake master cylinder. Just make sure that uh, you can see the, the brake fluid. Okay, we're going to uh, now check the oil level in the chain case. Uh, start by a four millimeter Allen wrench and go ahead and pull the check level plug out. Uh, at this point, we're not seeing any uh, kind of oil flow. So I'll go ahead and pull the rubber filler plug out, get that out of the way. Uh, take some, some of this XPS synthetic oil. Uh, it's really difficult to get the oil in without the uh, little uh, neck extension. So I've got one of those installed and I can just go ahead now and uh, let that oil come in until we start to see it flow out of the check level plug. If you're drained and refilling, it'll take a whole bottle of oil. There it comes. And so that uh, is how we check the uh, chain case oil that's completed. Just clean up a little bit of uh, what I spilled there. The brake fluid looks good. Uh, the uh, engine coolant looks good. Okay, now's a good time to uh, go ahead and check the uh, chain tension. And the way I do that is uh, it's pretty easy. I just pull, uh, pry off the plug here, uh, the filler plug, oil vent plug. And once I get that off, I have a visual of the chain so I can actually see it. And what I do is I just take the little tool that comes on the clutch cover and I can insert that and I can feel I'm pushing against the chain right below the top sprocket. And I can actually feel if there's any looseness there. This, this feels pretty snug. So uh, after I identify the tension, then from this side, uh, right here where I'm, <clears throat> where I'm pointing is the adjuster. And this, this tool, the star end of this tool fits right into the adjuster and turn it clockwise, we'll tighten it. And it doesn't take a lot. I'm going to go about a half a turn and then I'll recheck the deflection on the chain. Just by feeling it, I can feel that there's hardly any deflection on it. And so it might be just a bit over tight. I'm just going to back that off. This chain was actually pretty good. So I'll back it off a quarter. So effectively, I've just snagged it up a bit. And uh, at this point, I can go ahead and reinsert my uh, rubber cap. So it's kind of hard to see in the video what I was doing with the chain, but I take the little tool that comes on the uh, clutch cover and I use this uh, Phillips end to insert, insert it right below the top sprocket and so that I can push against the, the chain and I can actually feel the flex in the chain by pushing on it. The chain tension should be checked every thousand miles. Uh, I like to check it initially each each year before I go out in the snow. Uh, if it's a new sled, it's good to check it at about 300 miles right after break in and then every thousand miles or so. Now's a good time to uh, inspect the track and uh, check the tension and alignment. We do have a detailed uh, alignment procedure that we cover in another video, but for now, uh, you just need to do a quick visual on it, make sure that the track lugs are uh, good that there's no cracks or tears or rips, that there's no uh, wear bars uh, uh, broken or showing through. The slide rail wear strip is something that needs to be checked periodically and uh, it's a good time to replace them if they're showing uh, any amount of wear. 
if we can just look at this profile real quickly, you can see that this, this material is the wear material and you can run it until it's very thin. On the, on the edge of the profile, there's, a, there's kind of a high mark there you can see. And right at the bottom of that high mark where that, that uh, narrowest spot, you can actually run your high fax to that point. So uh, when the high fax is installed, you can find that high spot and looking at looking at this one, you can see I've still got some wear probably uh, three sixteenths of an inch of wear left on these. Uh, it's kind of a judgment call. Uh, as I'm going through uh, the uh, preseason maintenance, I'm probably going to want to go ahead and replace these uh, so that I don't have to worry about them during the season. Uh, these uh, high facts wear aggressively when you're in really marginal snow conditions, but when you're in powder snow like we ride, they, uh, they wear indefinitely. And so uh, it's just in marginal conditions that they actually will wear aggressively. For more details on replacing your slide rail wear strips, refer to our tutorial. Now's the time to check the ski alignment. Uh, we're not going to go into the full alignment process in this video. You can see that in our uh, tech tips tutorial. Uh, but for now, we're just going to confirm uh, that we need to make any adjustments. What you're looking for on your ski is an arrow. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a distinct arrow uh, molded into each ski. There's one arrow right in front of the spindle and one arrow immediately behind the spindle, here and here. And what we want to do is measure from the arrow on one side to the arrow on the other side. Here we're measuring 32 and a half inches. And then we compare that measurement to Uh, the dimension behind the spindle. This is measuring uh, 32 and 3 sixteenths. So what's that, what that's telling me is we have a little bit of toe out. Toe out with your skis is um, more desirable than toe in. Um, in a perfect world, we'd want our skis perfectly aligned. Uh, but it's better to have them towed out, say, a sixteenth to an eighth uh, than it is towed in at all. And so uh, having measured this, I've confirmed that my ski alignment is within spec. If you would like to uh, reduce that uh, tolerance, you can. And then just check with our uh, tutorial video on ski alignment. Okay, we'll go ahead now and check the uh, carbides on the skis. Uh, this one you can see, uh, this sled's got a thousand miles on it. Uh, it's a sled that we uh, rode last spring quite a bit. And you can see there's, if we compare it with a new wear bar, new carbide, you can see that uh, there's some carbides missing right here. Uh, this one's, where this one's got a full carbide. Uh, and there's actually enough wear bar left that it, It'll do a good job of protecting the ski. It's not worn completely out yet, but uh, because we're doing a preseason maintenance, getting it ready to, to go, I'm just gonna go ahead and put uh, a new carbide on it. There's uh, two nuts. It takes a 14 millimeter deep socket. Go ahead and pop those nuts off. And generally that uh, wire bar will slide right out unless it's been bent or damaged by rocks. Uh, go ahead and put the new one in. Install the nuts. So now I'll go through the uh, process to check the uh, brake pad wear. And first of all, we're going to uh, just pull the brake cover off. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket. There's uh, three nuts that you have to remove. 
and also one uh, cap screw with a uh, 30 millimeter Torx bolt, Torx head bolt. We've got the cover removed and now you can physically see the brake pad. So I just happen to have a new brake pad. I'm going to do a little comparison uh, here. And when I, uh, when I check the uh, amount of pad available on a new one and compare it to the one that's in my sled, I'm going to say I'm probably uh, about 75% uh, left. So I've got lots of wear. I'm not really too concerned about replacing these pads for this season. Uh, anytime you get below about 50%, you should uh, consider uh, replacing the pads. For more details on replacing uh, your brake pads, see our tutorial video in our Tech Tips playlist. Hey, we're just finishing uh, up our preseason, and the last thing that I want to uh, talk about is replacing the spark plugs. I've already prepared the hood so I can just slide it off. We do have a, tutu a, a tutorial on uh, re hood removal that you might want to refer to. For now, I'll just go ahead and slide it off. They're uh, kind of in a difficult and hard to get to spot. And also there's a retaining device on the spark plug cap. So uh, it takes a little effort to get that off. Uh, I'll just use a screwdriver as a pry bar and just kind of pop that cap off. All right, I got one and two. Now remember that this is a two cylinder engine and it has a firing order. And the first wire is the number two cylinder. This wire is the number uh, one cylinder because the firing order starts from the magneto side, so it's one, two. So we'll go ahead now and reach in with our uh, short handled ratchet and make sure you're using a good spark plug socket so that, you, uh, so that it protects the porcelain on the spark plug. Reach into place. and uh, go ahead and unthread the spark plugs. There's the first one. Go ahead and remove the second one. Uh, the original equipment spark plug is available through your local Skidoo dealer. Go ahead and Torque those down. These are a gasket type uh, spark plug, so as you tighten this, you'll kind of feel the gasket collapse. Now, we'll find the spark plug caps, and uh, what we need to do is unclip the uh, retaining clamp with a screwdriver. Remember, we pried these off without unclipping them like that. After we install the cap, then we just need to squeeze this clip until it latches. And that's what holds the spark plug cap in place. Remember to uh, put the uh, wires in the right order, this being number one. And number two goes on the PTO side cylinder. Once you know that the spark plug caps are seated, that's just a matter of reaching in there with your uh, pliers. Lock the clamp. Part of the preseason uh, inspection should include the recoil rope. This is uh, one item that uh, is considered a wear item, and the most common place for wear is going to be right here where the knot, where the rope goes through the recoil handle. So it's, it's a good thing to just take a visual and make sure that there's no fray going on there. If there is some fray, it's easy to just cut the rope, tie a new knot in it, and you're good to go. Hey guys, thanks for participating with me on my preseason maintenance. We're all ready for the snow, so that's the next step. If you have any questions, please uh, comment and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.